Hi everyone, welcome to part two of acids and bases. We're going to talk about the strength of acids and bases based on their dissociation constant. So, for example, you know about HCl being a strong acid because it has a pretty high dissociation constant or K value, Ka for acid dissociation. So if I have a molecule, I'm looking at how well it gives off, how likely it is to give off its hydrogen ion. And so that's a strong acid if it's mostly dissociated. Water is a weak acid, so its dissociation constant is much smaller. So when I'm thinking about the dissociation of hydrogen ions uh, from an acid, I'm thinking really simply just in terms of HCl breaking apart into H plus ions and Cl minus ions. You could also write this equation as HCl plus H2O makes H3O plus plus Cl minus. That's a more accurate description. But really I'm just thinking about dissociation in terms of does this hydrogen like to break off and become an ion or it doesn't? So if it does, then we call this a strong acid. And strong acids have very large Ka values, relatively high Ka values. Now let's review our dissociation constant, K. That's a measure of the concentration of products over reactants. So here's what it looks like. So what this means is that if I have a very large Ka value, I have most of my molecules as ions, H plus ions and Cl minus ions. So for a strong acid, this is relatively high compared to the concentration of the molecules where those two ions are together. Now you probably remember an equation from general chemistry, which is that the pKa or the pH or the P anything is the negative log of that thing. So pKa is the negative log of Ka. Ka, notice, has is like times 10 to some power. So we like to get rid of that exponent by just having a logarithmic function. So instead of saying 10 to the minus 2, we can just say 2, okay, because we're doing the negative power of 10. So that means that if I have a large value here and I do the log of that and I make it negative, that means the pKa will be small. So the larger the Ka, the smaller the pKa. And you can take a number and plug it into your calculator and see that's the case. So if we look at the pKa for HCl, we do the negative log of the Ka, and it's about negative 2. And if we look at the pKa for water, it's about 14. So we can tell just based on those values, so they're easier to say than the Ka values, the pKa's can be very convenient in that way. We can say that the stronger the acid is, the smaller or lower its pKa. So the stronger acids have a higher Ka, so they're ha they like to dissociate, so they're going to have the lower pKa. So in your workbook, I've put together a pKa chart for you, and this is just for approximate values. And you can see that it starts with zero. So the lower our pKa, the stronger the acid. So these are our strong acids right here, and those have an approximate pKa value of zero. So notice some of them are even negative. So I want you to notice that these super low pKa values are what we call strong acids. Everything below this line is a strong acid and everything above is considered a weak acid. Notice also that a molecule can have multiple types of hydrogens. It's the hydrogens in bold that are the ones we're talking about. For this molecule here, notice there could be H's elsewhere on the molecule, but it's this one in bold that I'm referring to when I say this molecule has a approximate pKa of 5. So what I'd like to do is walk us through using the chart to get some familiarity with basic functional groups and what their pKa's are. So let's look at A. We have H2SO4 or H3O+. If you look at the chart, you'll notice that those are at the bottom. Here's H3O+, and H2SO4. So these are strong acids and their pKa's are about zero or below. So I'm going to put, I'm going to think of those as about zero because it's easier to remember. It's not that I really need to know the precise value, I just need to have a ballpark figure. 
For part B, notice the functional group here, COOH. This is the same thing as a carboxylic acid, COOH. All right, so let's look for our carboxylic acid's hydrogen, this guy right here. Let's look for that in the chart. Now we just talked about that one. That's this guy right here. Here's my carboxylic acid. So I want you to know this is COOH, is the abbreviation for this functional group right here. And this is a pKa of 5. Now let's look at ammonium ion NH4+. Now I want to point out a common mistake, which is that students sometimes see this and they think that's NH4+, but it's not. It's not the same thing. This is a not very strong acid at all. In fact, it's what we call basic. So uh, if you look down here, this is our NH4+, and this hydrogen has a pKa value of about 10. And this is called a protonated amine. Now we look at D and we see alcohol or water. See if you can find that functional group of an alcohol on your chart. So here's our water and our alcohol, and these have a very similar structure. We just are replacing an H with an R group. So you can think of these as about 16. It's on our chart as 15 because I've found the closest multiple of five to remember these by. But 15 or 16 would be good for that. I'm going to put down 16. Go ahead and see if you can identify the rest of this row, and we'll come back and check our answers. So here are the answers. This is the hydrogen of an alkyne, so it's got a pKa of 25. This is an amine, this is at 35. And this is a double bond or alkene, so this hydrogen here is a very high pKa. They don't like to dissociate. Uh, this alkane hydrogen really doesn't like to dissociate. It's the top most one on our chart, 50. So in this exercise, what we're going to do is treat each of these as an acid, and we want to figure out which one of these will act as the acid and which one will act as the base. The best way to do that is, if you're not familiar, practice using your pKa chart. Identify who's the stronger acid. Remember, the stronger acid will have the lower pKa. And then you're going to do the curvy arrows and figure out what your products will be. Let's do the first one together. This is our protonated amine, so this is our nitrogen with the four bonds and a positive charge. If you look up here, we identified something similar to that, which is pKa of 10. So I'm going to say this is a pKa of about 10. This is water, which is a pKa of about 16. Based on these pKa values, I know that this molecule or ion is actually a stronger acid than this is. So this will be my acid, and this will be my base. Now I'll use the curvy arrows, and I'm going to grab this hydrogen and break it off. I'll write down what my products are. Okay, so this is what I got. Um, when this hydrogen gets broken off, I have the lone pair on this nitrogen, and now this is my conjugate base. My base grabs this hydrogen, becomes hydronium, so this is my conjugate acid. Go ahead and give the rest of these a try, and just one note on part C. Part C is tricky. It's actually no reaction, and I'm going to see if you can figure out why that is. All right, guys, so here are my answers. I've got, for part B, an alcohol, which is about 16 pKa, and this hydrogen's part of sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid. So this is going to be my acid. My base grabs the hydrogen, and these are my products. Don't forget the formal charges. And I labeled my acid base conjugate acid and conjugate base for practice. For part C, notice that this uh, base here, so clearly this is a pKa of 50, which is the worst, and then this over here is pKa of about 35. And so this would be my acid, this would be my base technically, but there's no place on the base to grab this acid. There's no lone pair here. So this is going to be no reaction. If I mix those together, there's no reaction. On part D, I've got my phenol, which is actually not an alcohol and not an aromatic, but it's its own functional group, an aromatic alcohol. So um, this has a pKa of 10. 
This is a regular alcohol, so this is just treated as a regular R group, so this is 16. So that's what one place where students get mixed up. They think a six-membered ring is a benzene ring, but it's not without the pi electrons. So just treat it as an R group. Don't forget your formal charges on your products. And then later, we'll talk about why this is a conjugate base that's pretty stable is because of the resonance structures. So you might want to, for practice, draw the resonance structures of this, which show um, a stability of that conjugate base. For part E, we have the acid, strong acid. This looks like hydronium, but it has a R group on it. But treat it like hydronium. It's almost like H3O plus, which is zero. And then you have your alcohol, which is 16. So you probably already just memorized your strong acids are zero, your alcohols are 16. Uh, so that's a good place to start. But you'll be provided with the chart in 261, but I tend to not provide the chart later in the sequence. So for part F, you see this is an alkynal hydrogen, and that's your acid compared to the amine. This is a good base. And here we see this is not an alkyne. This is called a nitrile group, CN, triple bonded. So that's our pKa of 10. So the electronegativity of the N makes this a stronger acid than the alkyne. Is that interesting? On the last example, we have a carboxylic acid, around 5, and an amine, 35. So clearly our amine is the base. It will grab the H, and we get these products. Just make sure when you do these that you're looking at the correct pKa value, and make sure that your formal charges are there, and that you understand the process of a proton transferring. So for example, this proton here is transferring to the N and ending up here. And that's important. And then we'll talk about how this can reverse. And we want to know which side is favored in the next video.